right, in this video we're going to be looking at X-linked or sex-linked traits. An X-linked or sex-linked trait is a trait that shows up only on the sex chromosomes. We're going to usually depict those as the X chromosome. In this example, we're studying colorblindness, and so we have not being colorblind being the dominant trait and colorblindness being the recessive trait. Since males only inherit one X chromosome, any recessive trait that's on that X chromosome is going to be more prevalent in males than in females. Because in order for a female to exhibit the recessive trait, she has to inherit two X chromosomes, both of which have the recessive trait on it whereas a male only has to inherit one of them. When you're filling out your pedigrees, there's a pretty standard way of how you go about solving these. Uh, in this one, uh, you're going to solve for all the colorblind individuals on here. Colorblind individuals, the colorblind males will be X little e y because they have the disease and they inherit X y's. And the colorblind females will be X little e X little e because that's the only way they can have colorblindness if they are female. So in our examples over here, we have one male in the third generation with uh, colorblindness. And it looks like a total of three in the third generation. And we've got two more, and I forgot about the one in the first generation. And finally, we have a female with colorblindness in the fourth generation down at the bottom. You will notice that there are six males that exhibit colorblindness on the pedigree. There's only one female. And again, that's because the males only have to inherit one version of the X chromosome with the recessive trait, whereas females have two chances to inherit an X chromosome and might have two chances to inherit a dominant trait overriding that recessive. Colorblindness is a typical example, also hemophilia is another great example. So after you have all the colorblind or affected people uh, discovered with their genotype, you can go and you can take a look at the normals. Um, the normal males are easiest to to uh, find their genotypes is if you're a male and have normal vision you must have an X chromosome with a dominant trait on it and a Y. So all of the males that have normal vision have to be X big E Y. There's four in the first or the second generation and the third generation has two and the fourth and final generation has two more. So all of those are big X E big E little Y. Uh, the next thing is, since this one is showing you the carriers, you'll notice all the carriers are females. Any carrier has to be a combination of big E, little e on the X chromosomes. So all the females that are characters are going to be X, big E, X, little e. Now in the next example I show you, we're not going to tell you what the carriers are. You'll have to figure out what those are. You've got to do a little bit of reasoning on those. All right, so there's all my carrier females. So now we are left with three females right down the middle here. Uh, one in generation one and generation three and four each have one. We don't know what they are, so we got to figure them out. So let's start up here with the top one and take a look at their family. And then well, we'll talk about how to reason this out and then how to go about this particular version that tells you about the carriers. Um, this particular woman, what you want to look at is the male offspring that she has and what kind of traits they have. So... The father has to give the Y chromosome to all the males. So he's given the Y to all the males. So it's the mother then that has to give the X chromosome. And in every single instance for her offspring, there are a total of three offspring, she gives an X big E. Well, she doesn't have color blindness, so we know she has to have an X big E. Now, just by reasoning, if we didn't know who the carriers were, we may not be able to figure out what the genotype of this individual is. Now, because we were told of all the carriers, well, she's not a carrier, so she has to be X big E, X big E. But just by looking at her family, you really can't tell that second big E. Could it be a little E? It could be. And we just may not have had enough males for it to show up in, in that generation. But because this one tells you what the carriers are, it's reasonable to put the X big E, X big E on this one. Now, the same logic applies to this individual right here in the middle. Um, she has to get the X big E from dad. So we know that this X big E goes to the offspring, that daughter. Um, then the question is, is does the mother give X big E or X little E? Well, you don't know, except in this chart, they told you who the carriers were. So she's not a carrier. So she's X big E, X big E. And so that's going to be the same logic you apply to this daughter from this coupling here. The father has to give the X big E. The mother could give either one of two of these. Since he's not a called a, a carrier, she, it must be the X big E. 
But if we didn't have the carriers indicated, then we'd be in a trouble. We wouldn't actually know what those three females are, as you'll see in our next example. So next example, I don't even know what trait we're looking at here. It's just an X-linked recessive trait, and we, we apply the same rules. Uh, on this one, I'm going to identify all the males, because the males are always easy to identify because their, their genotypes is just what their phenotypes are, because they only inherit one X chromosome. So males with the trait are X, and this, this trait, let's just say, is hemophilia or something. X little r, y is our males with the trait. So number 7 has the trait, and number 5, and number 9, and number 13, and 15. So all of those are X little r, y. So we get those identified right off the bat. Then males without the trait have to have the dominant trait. And so males that are clear have to be X big r, y. And so we'll nominate and make all those X big r, y's. And I think I got them all on here. Uh, then finally, if there's any females that have the trait, they have to be X little r, X little r. Because they have the trait and it's recessive, you got to have both recessive traits. So number one and number eight and number 14 are both showing this recessive trait. Uh, that now leaves us with a total of four individuals, four, six, 10, and 12. And we have to figure out what their genotypes are. And this one you have to reason out. So individual number four, individual number four has to get big R from the father because that's the only choice. The, the father either gives an X or Y chromosome, and if it was a Y chromosome, it'd be a boy, but this is a girl. So the X chromosome with the big R goes here. So we know it's X big R. This mother can only give X little R. So individual number four is X big R, X little R, and number four is a carrier, so we can half shade her. So she's a carrier of the trait. The same reasoning is applied to number six. The father has to give X big R. The mother can only give X big R, X little R. And so number six is a carrier. Now we go down to number 10. Number 10 is an offspring of three and four. Well, number three has to give X big R to the female. And now the question is, is what trait does the mother give? Well, in this case, there's not enough information. We know that the blue R came from dad, but we don't know which version of the gene came from the mother. We need child data for number 10 or a genetic test to tell whether she's a carrier or not. So I'm not going to call her a carrier. She's a potential carrier. The same logic is applied to number 12. Number 12 has to get the X big R from dad, but we don't know what she got from mother, X big R, X little R. So she's a potential carrier too. We just need more information to figure that out. You always look for that more information, usually in the offspring that there aren't any of for 10 and 12. And even then, sometimes there's not enough offspring or it just so happens the offspring come out in such a way that you can't still tell which one is given. So 10 and 12, unfortunately, we can't determine based on this pedigree. Hopefully that helps you with sex-linked or X-linked traits.